Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing another VFX shot as you can see in the example here. So in this video we're combining two things that we've done previously which is tracking and looking at the Boyd's particle system. So I'll be using Blender version 2.8, the release candidate for this uh, effect, but this can be done in previous versions of Blender. Some things may be a little bit different. But if you want to follow along, then uh, I'll throw a link in the description, go ahead and check that out. So let's go ahead and uh, choose VFX as our workstation. And if this is the first time you're seeing this, I did a video on my impressions of the, uh, the beta version, so go ahead and check that out, there'll be a link up here. But the uh, first thing I want to do is tidy this up. I don't need this section here. So I'm just going to right click over here and just join this area. So let's go ahead and load up a movie clip. Uh, this is the clip that I'm going to be using. If you want to use this too, I'll make sure I leave a link in the description. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see the timeline. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, set the scene frames. Let's go over here to the set scene frames button. So now we're using the correct number of frames. Next thing we need to do is prefetch this clip. So click this button here and you'll notice this bar will fill up all the way. If it doesn't fill up all the way, you will need to go to Edit, then Preferences, then over to System, and just increase the uh, memory cache limit. So now this is prefetched, we can play through this, see how the clip looks. So the idea is I'm gonna get some fireflies flying through this shot here, maybe going past, going off into the distance. So we'll probably only use maybe up to here. So what I'm going to do is just press Control C to copy this, Control V, just to paste it here. So now we've set the scene frames, we need to go ahead and track this shot. So before we add some markers, I want to go over here, change this to the track tab. So when we add a marker, we'll be able to see a preview up here. So for the motion model, let's change this to location rotation. For the match, I'm going to change this to previous frame. And then I also want to check normalize. So now we have these, we can go ahead and add our first track if we hold control and left click. We can add our tracking marker down here. And as I mentioned, we can see the preview up here. One thing we can't see is the search area. So the area where Blender is going to search for this pattern. So to turn that on, all we need to do is go over here to clip display. Then down to where it says marker display, we can just turn on the search size. There we go. So now we can see how big or how small this area is. Uh, the bigger this is, the longer it will take to track. The smaller it is, uh, it might slip or not work completely. So try and find a nice balance between size. So let's go ahead and grab this, bring this over here to the sun. Then let's scale it up, something like that. And then we need to scale down the search area. So there we go, that would be our first tracking marker. Now you can go over to the side here and use the tracking panel. So it's got all these tools here, or we can just use these, which is the same thing. So it's up to you which one you use. So I'm going to go ahead and use these just because it's more convenient. So I'm going to close this panel now by pressing T. So now I want to track this, and since we're on the first frame, we need to track it forward. So we can use this button here. We can see it tracks, and then it just stops. And that's because it's, it goes off the screen. So we can see from this point it stopped. That's because the, uh, the object it was trying to track is going off the screen. So what we need to do is go back a few frames. So I'm going to press the left arrow key on my keyboard. So here looks good. Let's go forward one. That looks okay. And then there it just ends. Now that's fine. Let's go ahead and add in a second one. So I'm going to jump back to the first frame. Let's add uh, one over here. Scale it up a bit. Scale it down. And then track it forward. Same thing happens. Um, it goes off the screen. But what we need to do is go back a few frames and just check it. And we're checking to see if this image deforms. If we see this goes over the edge, which it'll happen a little bit later on probably. But So these look fine and we can move on. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let's go ahead and add in some more. Uh, I'm going to add one over here. Scale this way up. And then let's track this forward. So now it doesn't look like it's failed, but already we can see a little bit of the edge here has creeped through. You know, you might not have noticed that. Let's see, it looks okay here. And then 
Right here is where it messes up. We can see a bit of the corner come through. So what we can do if we go back one frame. So if we click this button, it will clear the path. So now we have this, that's a lot better. So now I'm just going to do the same thing and add some more markers across this ridge line here, all the way across and just track them all in. And then I'll come back. So now I've added all the trackers in, I've added uh, 10 trackers, but you can add in as many as you want. Um, just add in enough so Blender can use that information. And if I play through, you can see where I added them. So let's go ahead now and set up the scene. Um, let's first, let's bring this down a bit. And then I just want to align the camera to the front view just to make things a little bit easier. So I'm going to press number pad 1. This is while I hovered over this window here, by the way. Now I'm going to press Control, Alt and Numpad 0. This will align the camera to the view. Now let's bring up this sidebar here by pressing T. Then if we go to Solve. Now as you can see when I play through the camera, the camera could be on a tripod. It's not actually going forwards or backwards. So if we click this button here, it will actually do more work for us. Now when we click Solve Camera Motion, we're going to get a number up here and we want to see what that number is. And the goal is to try and get this number as low as possible. So let's go ahead and click solve camera motion. So right now we get a solve error of six, which is really not good. You want a solve error of one or less. Um, but let's go ahead and see a few things that we can do to tidy this up. One of the first things we can do if we scroll down to where it says lens. Now, if you've shot this footage yourself, you'll know exactly what the focal length was. Um, since I downloaded this, it didn't give me any details to what um, what focal length they used. So we could either guess, we could probably change this to say 30 and then press it again. And so now we've got a, a solve error of 1.5. So that would work for this example that we're trying to do. It would definitely work, but we could also uh, refine it a bit more. So over here we have this refine option. Right now it's not refining anything. So let's click this. Let's tell it to refine the focal length and Blender will try and work out what it thinks uh, the focal length should be. Let's go ahead and click it again and um, let's see what the number is 1.5 so now it's 0 0.7 which is a lot better than it was before so just changing the focal length will give you a much better result straight away and if you know exactly what the focal length was go ahead and uh, change it another thing you can do if you've got barrel distortion or lens distortion you can change these k1 and k2 you could also do it by refining it by itself so focal length k1 k2 um, or by itself, just K1 and K2. Let's see. So it may give you a better result, it may not. Um, go ahead and try it out, see if it does. So now another thing you might wanna check. So when we select a marker, we can see it has an average error. So this is 0 0.1, which is good. 0 0.2, not bad. If we find one that's got an error of say six, 10, and what that does is just increases this number, which makes your tracks look horrible. So if you find that you've got one that is a high average error, just go back and retrack it or just delete it completely and then solve it again and uh, see what you get. So let's close this solve panel here. Let's scroll down. 
So under scene setup, all we need to do is click this button here, which is set up tracking scene. And then it does a few things for us. It first arranges our 3D view, but it also sets up our compositing, all our nodes here, which is amazing. So that's definitely a time saver. We can use this orientation section and set the floor, the wall, the origin, things like that. But again, in this example, we're really not going to need to. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be worried about that. Uh, let's close this window now. And let's see what we're working with. Let's jump back to the first frame. So we can see we have a cube and a plane. And again, if you've not used this before, this plane becomes a shadow catcher. So if you had, so for example, if this was a ground and you wanted to cast a shadow on the ground, then this would automatically do that for you. But again, we don't need these. So we're just going to use them as a reference. So if I just select this plane and then scale it up on the Y, just something like this. And then if we play through the footage, so you can see that the plane sticks to the ground or the water pretty well. Uh, so that's the tracking done. Now we can actually delete the cube and also the plane. We're not going to use them. Let's go back to the first frame. We could also delete the layers. If we go to compositing right now, we can see it's set up in a way where we have the foreground and the background, which would be the shadow and anything you add on top of it. So we don't really need these. So what I'm going to do is select this render layer here, which you can see is the background. I'm going to hold shift and right click on this uh, alpha over node. Then if I hold control and then press X, I'm just going to delete these. There we go. Now let's go back to the motion tracking, which is now the 3D view. So as I mentioned, I want these fireflies to sort of go across the screen. So let's go ahead and add in a particle system. So shift A. We first need to add in some sort of mesh that will emit the particles. So I'm going to use a cube but you can use anything you want. And you're probably thinking, why didn't I just keep that cube from before? It probably would have been a good idea if I did. Anyway, I'm just gonna scale this down and then I'm also gonna drag it out of the way. So I'm just gonna drag this and then move it over here a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is again, I'm gonna mask around these people here so it looks as if it's starting off in the distance. And then when it comes to, if we play through, we can see there's a guy here which will probably mask around and the fireflies will go behind him. So stick around if you wanna see that as well. So jump back to the first frame. We now have a mesh to emit our particles. So with the cube selected, we want to go down here to the particle tab. Let's go ahead and add a new particle system. Okay, so now we have this. When we press Alt A, we can play through this and we can see we have a particle system. Very simple. I want to change this now and hopefully and try and get something um, some sort of trail, I guess. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do this. Uh, the first thing I want to do is knock this down to say 50 for now. I'm probably going to have more than this, maybe a few hundred, but for now I'm just going to say 50 just to give me an idea. So frame start. So this is when the particle system will start from. I actually want the particle system to be started before we actually render it. So I'm going to start, say, in minus 150, something like that. Let's try this. So the particles would already have begun before frame one, if that makes sense. For the end frame, we know we need more than that. So it's 271 frames. So let's give this say three or 400. And then the lifetime, we can do the same. If you want to change the randomness as well, so they just disappear at a certain time, that's entirely up to you. Go ahead and do that. Now let's go down to physics, open this up. By default, it uses a Newtonian physics type. We just want to select this and change this to Boyd's. We will be changing the movement uh, for the maximum airspeed and the acceleration and velocity. Um, but again, we'll check that a little bit later on to see how it looks. Now let's go down to Boyd Brain. So already it's using um, a couple of rules. It's using the separate then flock rule. So if I play through this, you'll see what it does. And there's lots of different types of uses for this. I mean, I think it's pretty... Um, I think the uh, Boyd brain is pretty amazing. But for this example, we're not actually going to use these two um, rules. Let's just go ahead and delete them. Let's pause this as well. So let's go ahead and click this plus button here and choose goal. So now we're going to need an object for these Boyds to go to. So I'm going to shift A. Let's go down to empty and I'm going to add in a plane axis. So we can see we've added it here. I can scale it up just so you can see it. And then what I want to do is grab it and bring it over here so it's behind the camera if we can see it's kind of hard to see but the camera is here and then it sort of turns into this direction when it goes through like this 
so we want the empty to be over here so select the empty and if we jump to the camera view by pressing numpad 0 we can see this is and then we can scale it down so it's not too big and then bring it over here like this there we go so now we've added this empty here let's go back to the particle system so it's this box here that we added so now for this object we select the empty that we created now we need to jump back to the first frame sometimes the um, sometimes the particle system doesn't update unless you jump to the first frame but as soon as we do that we can see we now have these particles in a stream so if we press Alt A just to play the animation, we can see we get this. It might be a bit too high, so we can play around with the uh, positioning. So obviously I'm going to change a few things on this. I want to change the speed. Let's go ahead and do that now. So the maximum airspeed, I think they're moving a bit too fast. So I'm going to reduce this way down to say maybe 2. So maybe reduce these to 0.2. I also want to change the air personal space. So how far apart they are from each other. I also want to increase the number of them. Now let's jump back to the first frame. So since we slowed things down, we don't have that constant stream from the beginning. So I need to change this frame start again. Maybe try minus 300. Let's jump back to the first frame. Now they go across the screen. That looks good. So right now, if we pressed uh, F12 and rendered this out, we wouldn't actually see anything. We'd just see the background. We wouldn't see these circles. And that's because they're rendered as halos, which are invisible to the camera. So we need to create an object for the particle system to use. So let's go ahead and create that. I'm just going to go out here, Shift A, Mesh. I'm going to add in a UV sphere. We can also scale this down as well. Now for this object, we need to create a shader. So let's split this window. Let's go to the shader panel down here and click new. Then in this window, let's change this to the shader editor. So I'm going to change the shader type. So right now it's using a principal shader. So we don't need that. Let's go ahead and change it. Change this to an emission shader. Let's also see a preview of our shader. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to do something very simple and basic shift a input I'm going to use a layer weight bring this over here shift a converter color ramp I'm just going to plug this into the emission and we can also use the Fresnel into the factor like so and we get this then we can play around with these colors I'm just going to drag these in closer something like this so it's looking a bit harsh so we can, we can play around with the blend and we want to change the colors as well it's pretty simple uh, another thing we can do is add a bit of we can add a bit of interest to the um, to this sphere so I'm just going to go to the modifier tab and then go ahead and add a new modifier under the deform section let's use a displace then I'm going to click new and then we can click this button here which will take us to the texture tab then instead of using an image or movie what I'm going to do is use a cloud texture which looks pretty good and then we can play around with the scale so something like that and then I want to duplicate this and make a couple of variations so what we can do if we shift A I'm going to add in another empty but this time let's add in a cone just so it's different and then let's rotate this 90 degrees on the X just so it's stood up like this just so it's easier to see but now if I right click back on this object here then let's go back to the modifiers tab and under where it says texture coordinates if we change this from local to object so then we can use the cone so if we select this icon here and just select the cone and there we go so we might need to uh, play around with this scale I'm just going to scale this down 
And now what I can do when I right click on this, if I shift D to duplicate it, we get a completely different object or something not completely different, but it looks, it's a variation, I guess. So that gives you a variation on shape. If you want to add a variation for the color, what I'm going to do is add a, maybe a flicker to each one of these and make sure each one of these are different. So first let's go ahead and delete this one. Uh, and again, you don't have to do this. This is just an added detail and it might be going so fast. You might not even notice the fact that they flicker. But if you also want to add this touch, let's go ahead and do that now. So let's select this first object here. Let's go to where it says emission. I'm going to hover over strength and press I. So now we've added a keyframe. Let's go ahead and change a few things. So make sure we have this emission node selected. Then I'm going to split this window again and change this one to a graph editor. And we've used these in previous tutorials. So you might already know how this works. So now since we have this node selected, we can see this line here. And what we want to do is just change it so it's in a sharp, jaggedy sort of uh, pattern. <laughs> so what we need to do, if we press N, it brings up this sidebar here. Then if we change it to modifiers, then let's add in a noise modifier. And then straight away we get this. And you might be able to notice it if we go back to the, the shader. If we jump ahead, you might be able to watch this and see it get brighter and darker. We can see it flickers a little bit. Now, if you want to make that more extreme, we can go ahead and play around with these values here. The strength would make it um, stronger or brighter and darker. So let's go ahead and bring this up. So now when we play through, the changes should be more dramatic. So now we've got the strength, that should be good. So if you're not happy with the timing, you can play around with what's called the scale. This would drag everything out and, and it would take longer to flicker. So if we drag this out, we can see. But I'm happy with the timing, so that's fine for me. So now we have this first one. I'm going to press Shift D and duplicate it. Bring it over here. Then what I need to do is go over to the Material tab. So right now it's using the same shader. If we click this button, it's now its own shader. We don't need to rename it. We can leave it at material.001. But we want to make a variation of this one. We don't want them both to be the exact same. So what we can use is this uh, phase value here, which is essentially it's um, a seed value. Gives you a random seed, I guess. Now we've got this. We can just shift D, duplicate it. Click this button here to make it a single user. Then change the variation and do the same. So we just want to create a few of these just to make sure that um, we get some randomness and it doesn't all look the same. And you can do as many or as little as you want, so it's up to you. So I'm just going to do these and I'll uh, come straight back. So I only did eight of them, but you can again, you can go and do as many as you want. And let's go ahead and tidy everything up now. So I'm going to right click here, join this area here. And same thing with this one. We don't need the shaders anymore. So right click, join area. And there we go. So now we want to use these objects for the particle system. So now we have these selected. What we want to do is make them a collection or a group. So if we press control G, we've now created a new collection and we can go ahead and name these. go back to the cube and then go back to the particle system and then all the way down under where it says render right now it's rendering as a halo so let's change this to a collection then go down to collection here and choose fireflies then let's go back to the camera view and remember we need to jump back to the first frame play through we should see and we can't see anything since they're quite small I mean you can see them right there but let's go ahead and increase the scale 0.3 doesn't look too bad and then I also want some randomness for this so maybe try 0.4 so they won't be exactly the same size as well now we have this and if we give it a render see how it looks press F12 So we can see that we need to change the background. Let's close this down. I also want to change that window. I forgot to do it already. So go to render, display mode. This is if you don't like it popping up in a new window. I'm just going to change this to image editor. 
just so when I press F12, it'll change it to the image editor. So to add that transparency, all we need to do is go to the render panel, then go down to film, and we just want to check transparent. Now we have this, if we press F12, you can see we have the fireflies, which is great. We also have the uh, the box there, we can see the cube or any object that you used. We don't actually want to see it, we just want to see the fireflies. So, so let's go back, let's go to the particle system. And where it says render, let's just uncheck show emitter. Now we have our particles and the and they're in the correct position. So one of the things one of the things you might want to do as well, since these are moving, uh, you might want to add some motion blur. Uh, since we're in Eevee, I'm not sure why, but motion blur doesn't seem to work. Uh, maybe this is a, a problem or maybe this is a fault. But if you want to use motion blur, you will need to change over to cycles, which it means which means it will take a little bit longer to render. So it's a little bit of a trade-off if you want to use motion blur. So it's entirely up to you uh, if you want to use that, if you want to use cycles or if you want to use cycles or Eevee, it's entirely up to you. So we could go to the masking mode, open up our movie clip and then create a mask. Then we can go back to compositing. So depending on where you've put these fireflies, you might need to mask around some objects. If you do, just mask around the objects in the masking mode. Then you just want to composite them back in. Just shift A, color, mix. Let's just drop this in afterwards. Let's drop this in here. And then you just grab this feed here from the original movie clip, plug this into the bottom, and then shift A, input, add in your mask. And just choose which mask that you created. But then for the overall look, that's entirely up to you however you want to make this look. Um, you could brighten up these fireflies by adding in a color RGB curves. Just add this in right after the render layers. Maybe we're going to bring this right up. Something like this. That may be a bit too much. And again, if you add some motion blur, again, if we change this to cycles, add some motion blur, it would look a lot better. But it's entirely up to you which way you do it. I'll probably just render it both ways and you guys can let me know what you think is the best. Anyway, now you can go ahead and add some overall color grading um, and finish this off. When you're ready to render this out, make sure you go to the output panel and you can set your resolution. You want to make sure this is at 100%, otherwise you may have some trouble with your masks. But then let's go ahead and set our output. By default, I think it renders to the temporary folder, so let's go ahead and change this folder. So now you know where this is going to be saved to. Let's change the file format. Right now it's going to render as a PNG image sequence, so let's change this to be an FFmpeg video. Then down to the encoding. If we choose this icon here, we can choose a preset. I want to choose H.264 in MP4 format. So now we've changed all the settings, we can go ahead and render this out. Go up to render, then render animation, or you can use the shortcut, which is Control F12. Go ahead and uh, render this out. But hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you did, be sure to give this a like. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.